Welcome to Consumers Beverages Beer Show. I'm Kim Piazza. On today's episode, we celebrate fall in Western New York, travel to some great local breweries and cider makers, and learn a few things you might not have known about beer. Elkville Brewing Company is one of the pioneers in the craft beer industry. Now we're going to catch up with head brewer Dan Minner who can tell us a little bit more about EBC's history and some of the incredible local collaborations they're working on. Elkville Brewing Company, we're coming up on our uh, 29th year of production which is pretty crazy. We started out as a pretty small brewery uh, on Monroe Street with a 10 barrel pub and a few employees and we've grown into uh, a company that has over 200 employees in peak summertime with four different locations, uh, two in Ellicottville, one in Bemis and one here in our beautiful new facility in Little Valley, New York. At Monroe Street we have our iconic 10 barrel bohemian brew house. It's copper clad, it's beautiful. Uh, Mr. Miyagi uh, really does a nice job keeping that facility running and, and shines it up real nice. Uh, you know, we went through a lot of trials and tribulations uh, just learning what we were doing along the way on that, that tiny little brew house. And it was really cool because at that time in beer, not a whole lot of people knew what was going on. And it's really a nice place where customers can interact with the brewer, ask questions, get the smells, get a sense of what's going on. And uh, it, it's just a, a great place to, to hang out and, and check that, that scene out. Over the years, we've tried to find uh, great family-run businesses here in Western New York to promote this region and, and the great things we have to offer. Uh, some of those collaborations have been uh, Sprague's Maple Farm over in Portville, uh, Iron Smoke Distillery up in Fairport, New York, uh, Pumpkinville, which is right here in Ellicottville, New York, and also uh, Platters. Uh, Platters is a chocolatier that's been around for 85 years now. And uh, we've actually done eight different collaborations with them throughout the time. It's, it's awesome to be able to go up there and visit their uh, facility at, in North Tonawanda and the Wurlitzer building. It's a great place to find inspiration for new styles of beer and, and new flavors for beer. We just came off our uh, Peppermint Bark Stout, uh, which is out in stores. And uh, right now we have the Platters Orange Chocolate, which is pretty much their most famous item. Uh, it's something that they've been doing since the, the, the start and, and the family's been involved in it. Joe Urban and his family have been involved in it ever since. Um, so Platter's Orange Chocolate is a nice blonde ale. Uh, has that, that wonderful flavor that Joe helped me out with um, and hints of chocolate. Uh, and that comes in at about 8% alcohol. And then we're coming out with a hazelnut porter that uh, should be Nice, well-balanced, a uh, little bit of roasty malt, a little bit of uh, hints of chocolate, kind of reminiscent of your favorite uh, uh, chocolate spread. Um, and that should be a hit in stores uh, fairly shortly. And we'll be doing different collaborations with them throughout the summer. Uh, we'll be doing a, a raspberry truffle, uh, affogato, and who knows what other crazy things we'll find next time we're up there. Another great Western New York collaboration that we do is with uh, Sprague's, which is in Portville, New York. And we do the uh, Blueberry Maple Pancake, which is a 7% uh, blonde ale. Uh, it's aged with uh, blueberries and uh, maple syrup from Randy. He's got a great restaurant down there. Uh, that's an, and then we also do the Blueberry Maple Pancake Barrel Age, which we age in bourbon barrels that were used, used to actually age maple syrup in as well. Uh, we age those for three months and both those are actually out right now and you should be able to find them at your local consumers along with our uh, new variety pack which has uh, two IPAs, a cold IPA that uses uh, New Zealand hops, uh, Rakao, and then uh, something hazy which uses uh, citra, citra hops in it and then um, a Vienna lager and our new cherry wheat. That will be coming out uh, real soon here.
After Prohibition ended, the development of the beer can was finally completed. The first beer in a can was Kruger's Special Beer from the Gottfried Kruger Brewing Company in Newark, New Jersey. It was given to brewery employees and friends for evaluation. In January of 1935, Kruger's Cream Ale and Finest Beer were finally available to the public. Welcome back to Consumers Beverages Beer Show. Now we're going to head down the road to Lafayette, New York, where 1911 is using their apple orchards to take hard cider, spirits, and wine to a whole new level. Well, we have a, an extensive history. So 1911 was founded in 1911, so we're over a 100-year-old family business, you know, founded in the valley here in Lafayette. Um, the company's been in our family for over five generations, so it's been a long, history. In, in the early 2000s, the family made the decision to get into the hard cider business and the rest is history. So we're standing here in the 1911 Cider House and you know this is a facility we've invested a lot in over the last 10 years. So really we started as a bottling facility and shifted to a canning facility to, to adapt to the trends. But first and foremost we make everything from 100% fresh cider. So all stainless steel tanks, uh, we press everything in our cider mill so we can press up to 15,000 gallons of cider a day and that moves up the hill to our hard cider facility here um, and we can everything so you know we can can upwards of 2,000 cases a day so we are really one of the premier hard cider facilities on the east coast if you look at all of our tanks they're all glycol controlled so you know, we can actually measure the temperature within, or control the temperature within two degrees, uh, which in cider fermentation is really, really important. Everything is 100% from fresh cider, and that's extremely important when you're looking uh, at the 1911 brand. So everything's pressed in-house. We can actually control everything down to the variety of apple that we're putting in all of our cider. So 1911 original, for example, everything's Empire, Macintosh, Honeycrisp, and Gala, so we have a controlled blend of apples, and that's really, really important for the consistency since we're dealing with an agricultural product we want to make sure we keep those varietals in line and since we grow all those apples here at Beacon Skiff uh, it's very easy to control that. I would kind of classify our range of ciders that we make here at Beacon Skiff 1911 into two different categories. We have flavored ciders which are made from um, primarily a blend of dessert culinary apples which are then flavored um, after fermentation with delicious things like cherry or mango or pineapple or cinnamon and stuff like that, um, kind of more seasonal based products. And then we also specialize in more varietal based hard ciders where we kind of highlight the unique characteristics of certain apples. So things like Honeycrisp, Macintosh, um, Empire, or my own personal favorite, our Lafayette cider, which is a blend of Northern Spy and traditional European bittersweet and bitter stuff hard fruit. The cider making process is very similar to wine making. Um, it's a cold process. We don't brew anything here like a brewery does. So um, we'll bring in the juice, we'll inoculate it with yeast and ferment it. Um, the hard ciders will ferment in stainless steel for up to uh, three or four months. And then they get filtered, um, blended, and then packaged. The spirits has really been an evolution here at Beacon Skiff. Uh, started really as an apple-based spirit. so. We have our unique products like our Honeycrisp uh, Apple Vodka, which starts with Honeycrisp apples um, and really is a, a sweet interpretation of the Honeycrisp apple. We have a, a 1911 Honeycrisp hard cider, and we've actually dedicated 15 acres of our, of our farm here uh, just to produce that product. So the tasting room is the epicenter of the 1911 brand. We like to say the DNA of the company starts really at the Apple Hill campus in the tasting room. And we see over 400,000 people a year who come visit us. It's a beautiful setting overlooking our 1,000-acre apple orchard. It's actually the highest point in Onondaga County. So when customers come here, they really have a great experience and, and can really take in the beauty of upstate New York. Our next stop takes us to Lewiston, New York, where Brickyard Brewing Company is combining their incredible food with some of the best local beer you'll find in West New York. Here's more from head brewer Tom Winter.
My name is Tom Winter. I'm the head brewer of Brickyard Brewing Company. Our flagship IPA, White Bronco. It's a New England IPA. That is our absolute flagship. It's what we're known for. During Bills season, we have a few other beers that kick off that celebrate the Buffalo Bills. We have number 14 and number 17. Those are both IPAs. Um, other than that, we kind of base ourselves off of White Broncos and we sprinkle in a couple of other beers that cover the spectrum. Yeah, so upstairs, uh, we have a banquet facility you can rent out. Um, it's always packed. People are renting it out a year in advance. It's constantly booked up. Um, but it's a beautiful space up there. There's an upstairs bar you can rent. There's a the huge banquet hall. There's a patio that overlooks Center Street. So it's, it's a nice spot to be. Yeah, absolutely. So next door, we're known for our barbecue. Um, that's why they're staple. Nobody else in Lewiston does it. They were the first ones to do it. So, I mean, we're constantly packed on that end. But over here, we have more of a gastro pub type menu. We have wood fire pieces that are a hit. Um, we're always doing two for one specials, happy hour specials. So we have a, a more of a pub menu over here, but the pizzas are usually what is flying off the shelves. So. In 2020, right after COVID hit in May, we had a fire. So the fire absolutely destroyed the building. If you're looking up at the roof right now, it was gone. Like it was absolutely obliterated. Um, thank you to all the volunteers that came out and put it out because it could have been so much worse. It was, I, I'm pretty sure like going back to eight, the War of 1812, it was the biggest fire in Lewiston since the War of 1812. Um, but this place was demolished and we had all the staff coming in. We had people from around the community coming in, clearing the building, lending a hand. We had people just rallying around Brickyard to support us. Um, so our brew house, our seven barrel brew house, which was originally located over there, we ended up scrapping and we expanded to a 15 barrel steam brew house. Um, that's what we have out back um, and that's what we're planning on expanding off of with more 15 barrel tanks and lagering tanks. So the reason we're getting lagering tanks is because we take pride in our lagers and we take time with our lagers. It's a process, it's a extended maturation process. We brew traditionally and we're just platforming off of that. We go to a bunch of different um, events. You'll see us out doing sampling, you'll see us out. We have Hops and Harvest here in Lewiston, that's a big beer event. It's like our Oktoberfest, they closed down Center, Center Street. Um, tying in events and history, one of my favorite, it is my favorite event that we do here, is 1812 night. So we're tying in history with Old Fort Niagara down the road, their interpretive staff, and then we're having an immersive tavern night. So it's like you're stepping back in time. We do it every March. We have cast gals, we brew beer and bottle beer specifically for the occasion, historical styles. We have the interpretive staff come down in their 1812, War of 1812 kits. We have Jordan Smith, who's a native interpreter over there, perform traditional indigenous American songs, um, storytelling. It's a great night. This whole place is lit up by candles. Like, it's dark, it's great. Like, you don't see fall nights, it's just people talking to people, and you're immersed in history. Um, we have started to package product more. With that, we are selling more beer, obviously. So it's going out to consumers. Um, all the beers are a hit. We're having fun with it. And we're adding more cooperage. So we're getting more 15 barrel tanks. We're getting lagering tanks. We're just filling our brew house to the brim with more space because it's nonstop. So if you follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, that's where you're going to find all of our events. We make event pages, um, we promote everything we're doing, I would say mainly on Instagram. Um, and if you keep tabs with it there, you'll follow with our releases, our events, and what's going on in the brew house. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the Consumers Beverages Beer Show. But first, here's another fun fact about beer you might not have known. After Niels Bohr, one of the world's greatest scientists, won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1922, the Carlsberg Brewery in Copenhagen gave him a gift, a house located right next to the brewery. And the best perk of the house? It had a direct pipeline to the brewery, so that Bohr had free beer on tap whenever he wanted.
Now we head out to Gasport, where Becker Farms has been a Western New York fall destination for nearly 130 years, and where head brewer Andres Viscara is producing some incredible beer at Becker Brewing Company. I'm lucky enough to sit down with Andres Viscara at Becker Farms. Hello, Andres. Hello. And it just so happens that this gentleman is fifth generation family here at Becker Farms. So tell us a little bit about uh, Becker Farms being in your family for so long. Uh, yeah, I, I literally live here. I tell people um, that come visit, you know, uh, that, that this is my home and it has been my entire life. When you come to Becker Farms, you feel that mm -hmm. this is a place that's so cared for and so loved mm -hmm. and there are so many aspects of Becker Farms and today we're going to talk about the brewing. <laughs> that's right. I have a nice selection here, a flight of just a cross section, um, just a little taste of all of the things we have to offer that are uh, pretty unique to what we do here on the farm. And, and the things you have to offer mm -hmm. include beer, cider, mm -hmm. and wine. That's and right. All of those things are brewed right here on the spot. Yes. At Becker Farms. If not also grown here. So uh, Did you mention that behind us are hops? Yes, that whole wall there. A wall uh, of hops. A wall of hops, <laughs> yes. So let's talk a little mm. bit about the brewing. And the brewing happens right here on site. That's and right. you're using uh, you know, what you grow here mm. on the farm. So talk to us about what happens out back where I can see right through through there. I see those tanks. Yep. Talk to us about what happens in there. We have a 10 barrel brew house, um, which means it, we brew about 320 gallons at a time um, with 20 barrel fermenters. So we can do two full brews in a day that gives us about over 600 gallons of beer at a time. Um, and in terms of our ingredients, if we can't grow it here, we do source it locally. Uh, we work mainly uh, with a place in Batavia called New York Craft Malt, and we source 99.9% .9 of all of our malts from there. And Keeping it local. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of times you're going to find me and um, I have uh, another fermentation specialist, uh, a craft beverage specialist um, who works with me and a lot of the times we're talking about what we're going to do and our main goal for everything and it's a lot of bouncing ideas around but it all comes back to uh, what's just going to taste the best. Yeah. Absolutely. So and you're kind of open to what's new and what's going to work and maybe what's a little offbeat. Absolutely. But whatever is going to pique our interest and um, whatever we taste that is going to make us want to continue to taste. We know we have something good and we take a sip and we put it down and we keep going back. <laughs> Even I, We've had conversations where it's like, yeah, I don't know if I like this. And then you drink it again. And then we don't know. And then next thing you know, the glass is gone. And we're like, actually, I loved it. <laughs> I couldn't stop drinking it. <laughs> so basically, Beggar Farms, you've, you've set up an environment that's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for young families. It's a lot of fun for uh, folks of drinking age. It's a lot of fun for parties and incorporating all of these interesting flavors into the cider and into the beer and then of course the grapes that you grow on the farm mm. to create your own wine. Becker Farms is the only place on earth that you can find these places so you're gonna have to come out and visit. Thank you so much for sitting down with us and, like and for giving us the opportunity to see this wonderful outdoor space with the heaters and the hops on the wall there you <laughs> and go. for sharing your pizza bites with us. My pleasure. Backer Farms, it's a place to be for fall, for October. <laughs> Thanks, Andres. Very welcome. They say that variety is the spice of life and sometimes all you need to mix it up is a nice smooth glass of whiskey. Let's take a look at 13 Monkeys whose ties to the community and its local veterans run deep. The reason that we started 13 Monkeys All-American Whiskey is for my best friend, Staff Sergeant Christopher Dill. Dill, last name, Irish, is also a firefighter, so why not put whiskey on a fire truck? 13 Monkeys All-American Whiskey, it's a five-year bourbon mash, veteran-owned company out of Buffalo. On April 4th, 2005, my best friend, Staff Sergeant Christopher Dill, was killed in action while we were in Iraq. The date that he died, 4405, adds up to 13. 
He was a Buffalo firefighter. I was a police officer. Together we were in the military, which all three professions wear logos on their uniforms. He was an avid gambler, he used to bet on 13. My name's Jason, Della Friday the 13th my whole life. Whole side of the bottle has all the symbolism and meaning behind the logo that's on front of the bottle. We wrap both fire trucks that we do. We use in parades, we use all different things through the holidays, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, St. Patty's Day, Dingus Day. Bring out a bunch of people that want to support, you know, first responders, veterans, local nonprofit, our whiskey, things like that. So we take them out and have a good time with the fire truck. So I started KI Memorial Road March as a way to honor my, my best friend, Staff Sergeant Christopher Dole, that was killed in action while we were in Iraq. So I wanted to do something to help out, and over the last 11 years, we've raised 370,000 pounds of food for local veterans. And we've done a lot of things for military units and, and things like that. So, and as, uh, as it came out, I ended up meeting somebody that actually helped out with the mission for KI and 13 Monkeys, and everything kind of intertwined from that. In the military, we did a lot of fun logistic things and acquired large military items. Well, I did that overseas for my job. Now I got a chance to do it with KIA. I ended up buying a fire truck at a Girl Scout meeting. We'll talk to the fire chief. But with KIA, which is on my shirt here, Jay started a liquor company, a whiskey company, 13 Monkeys. And now being a part of that, that helps fund KIA. It also helps boost morale when we're doing events. What ended up happening was during the shutdown, we actually had a unit that needed some particular help. And Joe Maluski came to me and asked if it was possible if I can help out with their unit's Christmas party. Government didn't have any money for the soldiers and their families to have their annual Christmas party. And that's when KIA actually stepped in and said, yeah, we'll take care of them. We got ham dinners, we got Christmas presents for the kids, we brought Santa Claus, and we bought toys for the kids and they got to have a picture taken. So it was kind of seamless for the children. You know, the adults understood what we were and what our mission was. And, you know, lo and behold, Joe also had a fire truck outside that was taking kids around with Santa Claus on a, on a little roundabout there. So, meeting of the minds, we kind of got together and started using the truck for KIA, which the truck was named the Morale Response Vehicle, which was appropriate, you know, let's boost morale in the neighborhoods and everything like that. Then, you know, coupled with a, a whiskey company that was on the, the back burner, it came to fruition and lo and behold, we got a fire truck and now we have two fire trucks that boost morale with some alcohol on them and we go to local bars, restaurants and help out at the road march and a couple other events that KA does throughout the year. So we're in about 40 different liquor stores, 40 different bars and restaurants, Buffalo Chop House, uh, they make their Manhattan's out of it, we're in Vice, we're in Neat, we're in a bunch of local bars, Ebenezer, Ale House. You can go on our website and look at all the different restaurants and liquor stores that we're in. Which country is the biggest consumer of beer? Is it A, Australia, B, China, C, the United States of America, D, the Czech Republic? The answer is D, the Czech Republic, whose population consumes over 37 gallons of beer per person per year. Thanks for watching the Consumers Beverages Beer Show. We'll see you next time.